What's up, everybody? It's Hutch here, and we're on module 6-5, Combining Operations with Linear Expressions. This one, you're going to have to put it all together and really be careful. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and walk through this process. Basically, what's going to happen here is um, they're asking us to simplify the expression. Okay, simplify means take care, get rid of parentheses, and combine like terms. How do you get rid of parentheses? Well, sometimes it's distributing that does that. Uh, other times it's getting rid of a plus minus, that kind of, a plus and a negative, that kind of thing. All right, and then they do want us to write it in factored form, which is a little bit annoying, but oh well, here we go. All right, so step one, let's get everything separated uh, by addition symbols and get rid of the parentheses. So we're going to distribute here. Uh, and let's go ahead and write uh, our new expressions. We have a negative 2x plus negative 2 times 3 is 2, 4, 6, negative 6 uh, plus 8x. We need to go ahead and combine like terms. So let's get our x club with our x club. Uh, and so if we combine like terms, we end up with 8x minus 2x is 6x. Uh, and then minus 6, because we don't do plus a negative 6. So we've distributed, we've combined like terms, now they want us to write in factored form. So look at what we can pull out. It's easy to see we can pull out a 6 for this one, and so we have x minus 1 would have to go here. Okay. Uh, so that whole big thing ends up being 6 times the quantity of x minus 1. Okay. And you can sort of do a quick check and think about it, 6x uh, minus 6, yep, we're good, we did it. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and do a check. If you want to pause, you can, or just follow along up to you. Uh, I can see that I have this, so I'm going to have to distribute to get rid of those parentheses. Uh, so I have a negative 12x uh, minus negative 3 times 9 uh, is a negative 27. Okay, So you can see I have minus a negative, which is actually plus a positive. Uh, and then plus 30x, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and combine like terms. There's my x club and my x club. And join them together. 30 minus 12 uh, is 18. Keep the positive. That's x. And then we just have plus 27. All right, does it say factored? Yep, in factored form, so parentheses. Start thinking through what can you pull out of there? What can you divide both of the, those coefficients by or the coefficient and the constant? Uh, so I got to think about my factors of 18. I have 2 um, times 9. Oh, yep, I could use 9 for sure because 9 times uh, something is 27, right? So we'll pull out a 9. Uh, 2x, so 9 times 2x is 18x, and then plus 9 times 3 is 27, okay? And there we go, factored form, all done. Okay, let's go ahead and shift down to this. Obviously, we have some fractions now to be a big pain in the butt, uh, so let's go ahead and continue the process. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start the work, not rewrite the entire expression. Uh, let's get our distributive done because we need to get rid of these parentheses here. So 1 half times a 1 fourth, we can go ahead and write that, uh, is a 1 eighth, okay? Um, that's 1 eighth x minus 1 half times 2 over 1, okay? Uh, is obviously multiplied straight across or just simplify is 1. So we have minus 1. And then bring down my 3 eighths x. Uh, and that works out well. Uh, so we took care of our distributive uh, by multiplying. We have 3 eighths x plus 1 eighths x. So we're going to go ahead and combine the like terms there. Uh, gives us 4 eighths x minus 1. We need to go ahead and simplify. Uh, this does not say factored form. So our 4 eighths x simplifies to 1 half x minus 1. And there we go. That's your process uh, for simplifying um, expressions. All right, let's go ahead and try this one out. Same thing. We just have to simplify the expression, not factor it at the end. So we distributed property to get rid of the parentheses. Uh, 1 half 
times one fourth is one eighth x. Oh, sorry. I'm like pretending like this is a separate problem. That shows how tired I am. Uh, they're just saying, so the answer to that is, I would be sad if I did the whole thing all over again. It'd be disappointing. There we go. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and do a check with an actual different problem this time. Okay, uh, so we are going to distribute first. So we have one fourth times two thirds. Okay, um, you can cross simplify, uh, but you just have to be careful. If you cross simplify here, um, like for example, if I change this to this to do this multiplication, um, be careful that you don't use one half to multiply by uh, the negative eight. That would be incorrect. So I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, and just multiply straight across and end up with two twelfths, uh, which really works out well for that later anyway. Um, so we have two twelfths A minus, and I need to do one fourth times eight over one, or eight. Um, I can go ahead and cross simplify this if I want. Uh, so uh, one and two, if I divide both sides by four. Uh, so we end up with minus two. And then let's go ahead and bring down the rest of this stuff. So 5 twelfths A, uh, and there we go. So 5 twelfths A minus 2 twelfths A. Uh, we're going to combine like terms. So I want to go ahead and highlight those. Uh, and we end up with 3 twelfths A minus 2. Uh, last step, remember, is simplify. So 3 twelfths, uh, if I divide by 3 over 3, gets us 1 fourth A minus 2. Okay. And there we go. It doesn't tell us to factor. It just says simplify. Okay. Let's go ahead and move to example three. Uh, they want us to put it in factored form at the end. So we have a lot of steps to do here. Um, some things to notice. You can see the distributive has to happen. Uh, and then you can see also right here, I have a negative outside of the quantity, uh, which means this negative needs distributed. Um, so we're going to add the opposite, okay? We're going to do like a big KFC, okay? Where like this whole thing is the K, this is the F, and the change is both of those. Keep flip change, okay? Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and do that. Flip, negative, negative, okay? Uh, distribute, okay? Uh, so two-thirds, I'm going to write it on the side, times 18 over 1, okay, because that's what 18 is. Uh, I can cross-simplify here. Uh, so let's see, divided by 3 is 1, divided by 3 is 6. Uh, now we can multiply straight across, and we actually just get 12, so that's pretty nice. So 12x minus, and then we need to do our two-thirds times 12 over 1, okay, uh, cross simplify, divide by 3, divide by 3, puts a 4 there. Uh, 2 times 4 is 8. So 2 thirds of 12 actually happens to just be 8. All right. And then we have plus a negative 6x plus a negative 7. Let's go ahead and combine like terms. There's my x club and my x club. Uh, here's my constant club, negative 8 and negative 7, and let's join them together. Uh, so we have a 12x and a negative 6x, so that gives us 6x, and then negative 8 and a negative 7 uh, is a negative 15. Okay, do we have to factor? Yep, factored form. So let's go ahead and put our parentheses. What can I divide from both those uh, numbers? Uh, let's see, can we pull out a 6? Nope, that doesn't work for the 15. So think about your factors of 6, 1 and 6, 2 and 3. Uh, we could definitely use a 3. So let's pull out a 3. 3 times 2x is 6x minus 3 times what is 15? 5. Okay. So there we go is our simplified and then factored form. Okay. Let's go ahead and check it here. Same thing, we're going to start off, I can KFC uh, this quantity, okay? And then I have a negative 9, I'm going to change it to a positive 9, okay? And then we need to go ahead and distribute, okay? So 2 thirds of 27, or 2 thirds times 27 over 1. 
we can go ahead and cross simplify. Uh, 3 divided by 3 is 1. 27 divided by 3 is 9. Okay, and then we can multiply straight across, and we end up with 18x minus, what is 2 thirds of 45? I don't know, let's go see. 2 thirds times 45 over 1. Let's go ahead and cross simplify. Okay, so 3 divided by 3 is 1. Let's check 45 divided by 3. Woohoo, it works. It's 15. So we've got some cross simplifying going on. Uh, 15 times 2, if I multiply straight across, uh, is 30. Okay, so there's the distributive. And then let's bring everything else down plus a negative 4x plus 9. We can combine like terms. So we have an 18x and a negative 4x. And then we have a negative 30 and a positive 9. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and join these together. 18 minus 4 is 14x, and then negative 30 and a positive 9. Uh, we have different signs and track. Sorry, the bigger number, then you'll be exact. Sorry, I'm yawning. I'm getting tired. It's late recording this. Uh, 30 minus 9 uh, is a negative, or just a minus 21. Okay, so there we go. Do we have to factor? Yep, in factored form. So let's get our parentheses. What can we uh, divide both those numbers by? Uh, let's see. Uh, 14 doesn't work. I can't do that. So what are some other factors of 14? Uh, 2 times 7. Ooh, and will 7 work for 21? Yep, it will. So let's pull out a 7. Okay, 7 times 2x is 14x minus 7 times what is 21, minus 3, okay? Double check, thinking through that, 14x minus 21, and that's what we want, okay? So we're good, okay? All right, uh, let's go ahead and check out uh, the last two, uh, two problems. These are applies. Uh, I'm going to walk you through exactly how to do this so you're okay for your homework, um, they, they are a little bit uh, interesting. Uh, so basically, uh, we have these two areas, okay? Um, you have this inside area, okay? And then you have this outer, like, walkway or, like, garden area. And they want to know what's the area of the outer garden. So that would be easier. If we were dealing with easy numbers, right, we would just find the area of the whole thing, and then we would find the area of the middle and subtract it. Okay, and that would tell us the leftover ring around the outside. Uh, so we are going to have to set this up, uh, but it's going to be a little unique because, look, we have some measurements like 3x. So it makes it a little bit funky looking. Okay? So first of all, let's identify the entire um, length, or in this case, the width of uh, the entire garden. Okay? Uh, so we have 3, 5, and 3. Uh, as a length, so 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So this whole distance is 11 feet. Uh, and then let's calculate the entire top distance. Uh, it looks like we have 3x, uh, and then we also have plus 3 and plus 3, okay, uh, on both sides, because we see this um, thing here telling us that that's three feet. Okay, so we have three feet plus three x plus three feet, and that's the length. Okay, um, so obviously instead of doing the three plus the three, we could just write six would be fine. Uh, so we have three x plus six uh, is that entire distance. Okay, um, so that could be represented like this. So look, we have 11 times 3x plus 6. So that's all you have to do is find the single number times the length that has a funky expression. And really, that's length times width. That's how we find the area. So let's find the area now of the small one so we can subtract. And remember, we want to subtract, so let's put minus. Okay, So we have the area of the large triangle. And actually, let's make this note right here just so we have some clarity and are labeling things. Okay. 
So area of large, I don't know why I said triangle, I'm so tired, area of large rectangle, and then let's subtract the area of small rectangle, okay? So what is the area? Well, length times width, okay? So we have five times the uh, part with the variable. So five, uh, actually, no, sorry. What was our area of the small rectangle? Yeah, so it's five times uh, the 3x. So we have five times 3x, okay? That's what this inside amount is. Okay, so we're taking the area of the large and subtracting the area of the small. Uh, to do that, we need to go ahead and get everything simplified. So let's go ahead and distribute. Okay, we'll distribute everything. So we have a 33x plus 66 minus 15x. And there we go. Uh, we can go ahead and combine like terms. So there's our x club and our negative 15x. So we have 33 minus 15, and we get an 18, keep the sign of the bigger, 18x plus 66, okay? So write an expression, oh, bummer, in factored form that represents the area. So we have this 18x, and we have a 66, okay? So I have to do factored form. Uh, let's say that I'm not sure... Uh, I know that I can definitely pull a 2 out. So let's start with that. If I just pull a 2 out, then what? I'd end up with a 9 in here. Uh, and half of 66 is 33. Then the question is, like, well, can I pull more out? I'm not sure. Okay. So um, I could go through that process and think through it more, or this might be a good one where I wanna do the like prime factorization thing, okay? So here's 18, cause this is sort of easy, look. Okay, so there's my prime numbers. Uh, and then let's do it with 66, and this is sort of easy too because it's just 11 times six is 66. And then six breaks down to two times three, okay? Um, so then, remember, all we have to do is find the pair. So I have a 2 and a 2, and I have a 3 and a 3, okay? And so remember, all I do is I say, oh, a pair of 2s and a pair of 3, so 2 times 3, my greatest common factor is 6, okay? So that really, like, helped me know that for this uh, set of terms, I can pull out a 6, uh, so 6 uh, times 3x gets me the 18x, and then 6 times 11 will get me uh, the 66. And there we go with our final answer, okay? Uh, so the perimeter equals that, okay? Uh, or sorry, not the perimeter, the area. Uh, the answer is that would be the area of the flower border is right there. Okay, so area equals. All right, let's go ahead and do this swimming pool. Um, they want an expression in factored form, unfortunately, that represents the area of the walkway. So again, we're going to take the entire length times width and then subtract uh, the area of the inside part to just find out what the walkway is. So find your length uh, and width of this. So let's see, we have uh 4x plus these pieces here, which are 5 and 5, so that's 10, okay? And then what is the length of this side? Let's see, we have 15 uh, plus 5 plus 5, so 15 plus 10 uh, is 25 Okay, um, so there's our length and width of the big, and then remember we want to subtract the small. Okay, so length times width, let's go ahead and set this up. I'm going to do my individual constant first. So length times 4x plus 10, that's my length times width. So this is area of the big shape, and then I want to subtract the area of the swimming pool, okay, to get the leftover uh, border. 
And so the area of the swimming pool, it looks like, is 15 times 4x, okay? All right, so now we can go ahead and simplify. Uh, so let's go ahead and I'm going to uh, distribute here. So we have 25 times 4, that gives us 100x, plus 25 times 10 is 250, and then minus 15 times 4x, uh, 15 times 4 is 60, uh, so we have minus 60x. We can go ahead and combine like terms now. So we have the x club with a negative 60x, uh, and so 100 minus 60 is 40x plus 250, okay? All right, that's the simplified. We have no more parentheses. We've combined like terms, uh, but they want the factored form, okay? Uh, so again, this is really hard to figure out like, okay, well, it's 250 and 40. What's the greatest common factor? Um, so this is where maybe you start off small um, to just uh, and work your way down. So let's, why don't we do something even like um, by just pulling out a 10, okay? So 10 times 4x would equal 40x plus, and then if we just have 25 here, okay? Uh, 25 times 10 is 250, okay? All right, and then if I'm not sure if I can factor more, Okay, uh, you could do something like this and just do your prime factorization tree. So two times two, um, the 25 is nice and easy. It makes a five times five. And look, there's no nothing common. Uh, so you know that you actually factored the greatest common factor and you're all done. Okay, all right. So this is the factored form that represents the walkway. Okay, all right, let's head to your homework now. Okay, so this is 6-5 practice homework. I... Uh, you can see all similar problems as the notes, uh, and then you do have two of those same uh, area problems to really like push you a little bit, uh, maybe out of your comfort zone some, but I think you're very capable if you go back to your notes and imitate that process, okay? All right, so let's go ahead. It says simplify each expression, uh, and then we need to write in factored form. So let's uh, there's a whole bunch of these to practice. We're doing this same exact thing for all of them. Uh, so let's go ahead and crank through um, about half of these together, and then you can work uh, on the other half on your own, okay? All right, so uh, first thing, we see that we have to distribute. Okay, I'm gonna go a little bit quick here. Uh, okay, so we distributed, brought down the next layer. Let's go ahead and combine like terms. We have our x clubs there. We're always going to highlight. Uh, so we end up with 8x plus 12. Uh, they do say in factored form. So what can we pull out of there? Uh, we can't pull out an 8 from both, uh, but if we're thinking the factors of 8, uh, next one would be 2 times 4, and I can definitely factor out a 4. Okay, So 4 times 2x is 8x plus Four times three is 12, and there you go, okay? All right, I'm going to go down to number four. I can see right away I'm going to need to distribute to get rid of the parentheses. So we have a negative 16x, and then two uh, times a negative three is a negative six, okay? Or just two times three is a minus, and then six. Uh, and then plus 18x, let's go ahead and combine like terms. So we have a negative 16x and a positive 18x. Uh, different signs subtract, 18 minus 16 is 2x minus six. We need to have this in factored form now. Uh, so let's just go ahead and pull out a two. So we just have x minus three. Okay, because if we're dividing two from both those, that's what we end up with. So there we go, and it, if I distribute, it matches. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and do this fraction here, number seven. So here's my distributing that has to happen first. Uh, so I'm gonna end up with times one times one and two times four. That's an x plus half of 10 is obviously five. And then bring over my 
5 8 x So that works well. Let's go ahead and highlight, combine like terms, 5 8 x and a positive 1 8 x Make sure you include that sign. Uh, is obviously 6 8 x plus 5. Okay? All right, and uh, that is in the lowest factored form, so you're good. Okay? Uh, all right. Let's go ahead and look at number 10 together. It looks a little bit funky and bigger. Let's go ahead and distribute the negative one half. So we're just wondering what is one half of those things? So half of 32 is 16, okay? But it's negative, because negative times a positive, okay? Minus, and then what's half of 40? Half of 40 is 20. Uh, so it's negative one half times positive 40, or you can look at it like this, negative one half uh, times a negative 40 is gonna be a positive 20, okay? Negative times negative is a positive. And then we have plus 20x minus four. Let's go ahead and combine like terms, negative 16x and a positive 20x, and then we do have to have a different color for these constants, a positive 20 and a negative four. Let's go ahead and combine like terms. Uh, 20 minus 16 uh, is a difference of four x, and then a positive 20 minus four is plus 16. So we have four x plus 16. Uh, it does tell us we need to factor, remember, so what can we pull out of both of those? Um, I can definitely divide both by 4. So I'm left with 1x, or just x. So 4 times x equals 4x, plus 4 times 4 is 16. So there you go with number 10. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at uh, number 5 and 8, and then you can mess with uh, the rest there. Okay. All right, so distributing. So just giving you a lot of fluency in practice. Uh, I'm going to have my 3 eighths x minus what is 3 fourths of 4. Well, 3 fourths of 4 is 3. Uh, but on the side, here's what it would look like. 3 fourths times 4 over 1. Uh, cross simplify and end up with 3. Okay, so minus 3. And then we have plus 1 6 x. Okay. All right, so we have to join the 1 6 x plus the 3 8 x, okay? Uh, unfortunately, we don't have uh, common denominators, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, so let's see. Uh, 6 times 4 is 24. We could turn these both into 24 uh, So let's do that. So times 4 over 4, we would end up with 4... 24 uh, how do I make 24 here times 3 over 3 uh, so I end up with 9 24 okay so we have a 9 24 plus 4 24 9 10 11 12 so 13 24 x and then uh, let's see minus 3 okay uh, so there we go. We got our like terms combined and all that. And uh, when you have the fraction and a whole number, you're going to be done. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. You got number two up there. That's a good one for you to save for yourself. Uh, let's see. How many have I done? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. All right. We'll do one more uh, for you. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, I'll do number 11. That's a little bit harder looking because we have that other distributing so remember we don't want to be have a minus in between these so we're going to k do a giant k f c okay and we're going to flip change change okay all right so that's taken care of now we can do our distributing uh, so two-thirds times nine over one uh, we can cross simplify here, and you can see we end up with 6x. Okay, so I have a 6x 
minus what's 2 thirds of 15. 2 thirds times 15 over 1. I can cross simplify this too. Divide by 3. Divide by 3 and I get 5. And so we have a 10 here. Okay. And then we have plus 6x minus 2. Okay. So there we go. We've created all that. That was a lot of work. All right, let's highlight our clubs here. So we have a positive 6x. We have some constants, negative 10, negative 2. Uh, and let's go ahead and combine like terms. So we end up with a 12x, negative 10, and a negative 2, minus 12. Okay. Uh, it does say factored form. So here we go. I can definitely pull out a 12 on both those. And I just have x minus one, okay? So there you go, that's the process. All right, so we'll save the rest of those for you. I know that those are a little bit difficult, so just take your time. Uh, you have a lot of good examples to uh, reflect on, okay? All right, let's take a look at your um, problems here. Um, I'll do 14 as a just another reminder for you, and then you have 15 on your own, okay, to try out, okay? Um, so here we go, um, 14, okay, uh, I need to find just the border. So remember, we're taking the entire rectangle, length times width, and subtracting out the area of the inside. That would be the same for this, okay? I want to take the entire length and width, okay, of the ground, and then I would subtract uh, the little hamster house, Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and set up your expressions. So what is the length and width of this entire green? Okay, so we have to look. The borders are 4, so it's a 4, a 3x, and a 4. So obviously 4 plus 4 is 8. So really this entire length is 3x plus 8. So that's your first step is listing what the length is. Uh, let's do the uh, width now. So we have a 12, a 4, and a 4, okay? Uh, so 12 plus 4 plus 4 is 20. And so we have 20 here, okay? So the area of the big is length times width, okay? We're going to do the single number first. So we have a 20 and then in parentheses, the 3x plus 8. So that's how we're representing uh, the large rectangle, okay? Uh, and then, remember, we want to subtract the blue from inside, okay? And so the blue length and width is the single number times 3x, okay? All right, and so this is the small rectangle, Okay, so you're going to do the same thing down here. You're going to figure out what's the large rectangle, what's the small rectangle, okay? And we're going to be subtracting them just like this. You just have to figure out what is the length and width, okay? Uh, and so you'll have a single number on the outside here, okay? And then the variable stuff in the quantity, okay? So this is the same thing we're going to be setting up uh, for ours. All right, so let's go ahead and we need to get rid of the parentheses. So we're going to distribute to do that, okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and do that process. So 20 times 3x is 60x plus 20 times 8. 2 times 8 is uh, 16 with a 0 is 160 minus 12 times 3, 12, 24, 36. 36x. Let's go ahead and combine like terms. So we have the 60x and the negative 36x. Uh, so 60, let me get my calculator. 60 minus 36 is 24. So we have 24x plus 160. Okay. All right. And they want it in factored form, of course. Great. Thanks a lot. So we got to figure out uh, what we can pull out of both of those. And, oh, geez, um, I might, just because it's so big, let's see if 160 divides by 24 or not. 
Nope, it doesn't. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to do my factor tree for this one uh, to find what the GCF is. So um, 2 times 12 is 24. Um, 3 times 4, 2 times 2. Um, and let's do the 160. So I always just do the 2 times something because that's easy. Um, 2 times 80 is 160. I don't know why I'm circling that. Um, and then 2 times 40. And then 2 times 20. And 10 times 2. And 2 times 5. Okay. So there's all my primes. And then all we have to do is highlight the common. So there's a pair. Um, there's no threes, so there's another pair of twos and another pair of twos. So just count how many pairs. There's one, two, three. So a two times two times two. Uh, two times two times two is eight. Okay, And so that means our GCF equals eight. Okay, So that means I can pull out an eight here. Okay, So three times eight is 24, so that's 3x plus... And if I pull out an 8, we can do 160 divided by 8. And we get 20 inside. Okay? All right, so there is my most simplified uh, in factored form of the area of the border. I'm sorry, so annoying. Okay? All right. Uh, go ahead and just, I think it's good for you to try to do 15. Um, it's definitely going to push you. It's extremely complex to go through that process, uh, but it's, it's good to challenge yourself. So give it a shot. You're very capable of doing it, uh, but I know it is going to uh, push you out of your comfort zone a little bit. Okay. All right. Take your time. Work through there. I know it's a lot, uh, but you can definitely uh, pull it off.